Okay, well, welcome one and all. Um, we've got uh, lots of lovely people from Credit and Tiverton and Transition Exeter tonight. Um, so thank you all for coming to our first online talk. Um, um, I'm sure we're going to get a lot more of these and um, we'll get a little more polished as we go along. Um, we'd like to thank Roxy Piper and New Prosperity Devon organisation for the Zoom service tonight um, because uh, they've got a better Zoom than we've currently got and um, for all the good advice received from Roxy. So for everyone who hasn't met me before, I'm Dee Ross, currently the chair of Sustainable Crediton for the past couple of years. Our organisation started in 2007 um, as a climate action group, but we changed our name when we became one of the earliest transition towns. Sustainable Crediton's mission is to help people in Crediton and the local area to lead more sustainable lifestyles. So. Um, We've always supported ideas such as these formed by the incredible Todd Morton, but today not have the people power to make it reality. But we were hoping maybe this can change after tonight as more interest has been shown recently. So without further ado and taking up um, the time when we could be listening to the, all the interesting things, if I can now introduce Louise Cumberland, who's one of our members that helped volunteer to, to organize tonight's talk. Thank you, Dee. Thank you very much. Well, I'm Louise and I'm absolutely delighted to be able to introduce you to Mary Clear, who is going to talk to us this evening about the power of small actions. Um, Mary's from Todmorden in uh, near Manchester, which is where I'm from. So for many, many years, I've known about Mary's work. And it took me to move down to Devon before I got to meet her, albeit on Zoom, still got to meet her and hear what she's got to say. So it's absolutely brilliant. I just, I just wanted to um, give you a little bit of an idea about what's going to happen now and also to let you know a little bit of background on, on Mary. So we've got probably uh, about an hour and a half together today. Um, Mary's going to talk for half an hour um, and then we're going to take some questions and we felt it would probably be best if we could use the chat box facility um, to write your questions in there um, and then technology all being well the lovely Caroline is going to um, copy those questions and, and ask Mary uh, the questions one by one so fingers crossed that all works splendidly. Um, followed, following the questions, uh, we'll have um, some breakout rooms where we were thinking we could have a chance to discuss what small actions we could take forward um, and, and then come back together and share those small actions as a way of finishing off our time together today. Does all that sound okay? Thumbs up for yes. Yay! <laughs> Great stuff, thank you. So let me introduce you to Mary. Mary is a dreamer and a schemer and she's living life on the edge. Mary sleeps like a baby because every day is filled with adventure. She's an activist in a hurry to do her bit to see a better world. She believes in saying, be the change you want to see. Mary's the chairperson of Incredible Ed Edible in Todmorden and co-founder of an idea that has rooted across the world. We're seeking to make a kinder world. We use food and growing as the lever. We have achieved more than anyone reckoned was possible, having oodles of passion and a great sense of fun. We have no offices, no paid workers, no worries. We use the gifts and the energy of the community. And with that beautiful statement, Mary, I'd like to hand over to you to give your presentation. And Roxy, if we could start recording now. Perfect, Thanks. thank you. Um, so uh, I hope it's gonna work, I really do. So thank you for inviting me. Let's just, let's just make it work and then I'll feel better. I'll share screen, da da da. Uh, 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 can you see anything? Tell me when you can. 
Can you see it? Can you see it? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Well, we're cooking on gas, as they say. Fantastic. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I talk really fast, so, you know, just try and stay awake. Um, I haven't got a watch or anything like that. So if you get really terribly bored, could somebody on this list just sort of send me some sort of signal to say stop talking um, because it is rude to bore people. So um, I'm just going to whip through my slides because we always think um, here in Todmorden, you know, anybody can get up and bullshit nowadays or write a load of rubbish. We really love pictures because pictures, you know, they're not easy to fake, are they? So I'll just tell you, I'll start off telling you that um, the, it is an incredible story and it's a true story. And because there's no empire and nobody's paid, do you know, we don't care two hoots whether anyone likes it or even believes it. So I'll fire away. In 2008, a group of us were really worried about the future. Cast your minds back to what happened. We all woke up one morning and we discovered the bankers were up to no good. And that uh, really the country, were, the whole world was in a massive recession, mainly due to people with power mucking about with our money. And we were really worried about that. We weren't worried for our because, you know, I've lived a life where university education was free, where it was possible to dream of home ownership. It was, it was seen as derriguer to fly all over the world and do all this stuff. And maybe in my lifetime, thousands of animals and creatures have died, we've lost those species. So we were concerned, not about ourselves, we're, we're all going to one place. We all know that, us older people, we've come to terms with it. We were worried about the future for our children. And when you're worried, you can do lots of things. Uh, you can blame government, blame America, blame Europe, blame each other, blame um, all sorts of people. You could set up an empire to fix it, but we thought, we don't want an empire. We don't want to be dependent on other people to say so. We're going to use the skills of the community because we believe no matter what age or ability, our community is full of kind, skilled people. We also thought, do you know what? We need to crack on here. Really, we're not gonna get caught up in all that health and safety tosh. We're not going to hang about waiting for people with power to tell us what we can do or we can't do. We're going to ask for forgiveness, um, not permission, really, because we're in a hurry to make a better world. So that's, uh, we started off like that and we're still in that position where we're prepared to say sorry if uh, someone's upset. The other thing we really adore is the magic of words. And uh, this is word kindness, we really love it. And this is the railway station car park, but we've got it in huge Hollywood letters on the hillside as well. And people have got car bumper stickers and window stickers, it's just lovely. And another thing, we're absolutely convinced, completely convinced, and that is the power of the table, the power for humans to eat together is so important. We're tribal animals. We're not, you know, we've not been on this earth a huge amount of time. And it's really, it is the glue. Food is the glue for all of us. And after every gardening Sunday, which obviously we can't do it now because of COVID, we share a vegetarian meal together. And really, I'm, I do wonder sometimes whether it isn't the food that makes us very attractive as opposed to the work, but it, it all gets done. And this, this picture just really demonstrate how strong that 
motivation is to be together. This is the first Sunday in January, a couple of years ago. It was minus six, and I do love the archers. You know, it's my little foible. And I thought, I won't have to get out of bed. The ground's frozen solid. Nobody will come. But I nipped up there just in case. And there's a queue of people waiting to work. And here we are eating it. it we use an old community building, which is a church. It's got no heating. It's colder inside than outside. But that meal was even more special. So I really believe we all want to help our own tribe. So this is our police station forecourt. And I'll just say something about Todmorden. We're equidistant in a deep, um, very deep um, middle of where three valleys meet. So we're a long way from anywhere. The center of power is in Halifax. So we feel we're a border town and forgotten. And we're next to Burnley, Rochdale and Halifax. So you can buy a lovely house still for 60, 70 grand around here. So I'm trying to tell you our economic situation. And it's, uh, it's not the softy south, it's the tough, roughy, tufty north. So this police station happens to face south and you can see gets a little bit of sun and we've transformed that into a really uh, edible police station we could have asked permission. I mean, I, I, I did broach it gently with a policeman. He said, oh, no good asking me. You've got to ask the sergeant. Oh, and he's got to ask the inspector. And he's got to ask the guy in property management. He said, Mary, maybe you should just do it. And there we go. All these years later, the police use it on their publicity. And... Um, I think they like to think they do it themselves, but they don't actually. And this is the police station in the summer. Anyone who's a gardener, let's get this clear now before you ask any silly questions about gardening. We are not gardeners. We give two hoots about it. We're fun people. So we're growing, it's impossible in the North. We're growing sweet corn because the kids call it popcorn and we think that's quite funny to have cop corn so that's the only reason we try to grow it because it's funny and we're growing fuchsias because we like them and you can eat them and so we like something pretty to eat as well which is not perhaps very um growery but anyway uh, the other thing we really love is benches for consecutive, not, the, not just the Conservative government, the Labour government did it too. In the last 20 years, this country has been stripped of public toilets and benches. And we feel affronted by it, especially we women with dodgy knees who like a sit down. We think it's absolutely shocking the way there's been this stealth movement of, of getting rid of public spaces. So we've put a lot of energy into... Um, installing benches. Now, anyone who's listening in authority knows you can't install a bench. You have to have engineers, uh, da, da, da. But we don't do that, we just do it. And so far, all our benches are there. And the beautiful thing about these pictures, you can see the children smirking. That's because these two policemen came along while the bench was being carried. So we let them be the first to sit on it. So therefore, the bench is legal. That's how we work out things. We love our recovery centre. So we're lucky enough in this town to have a recovery centre for people with alcohol, drug addiction, so that they can recover in community. And we all of us think, you know, there but for the grace of any God goes any of us. So we've made a special effort to reach out to those people because whether they're an addict or they're recovered, they still live in this town. So we might as well crack on with it. And we're not fussy. You know, we are really not fussy. The door's open to anyone. So the lady in the red jacket is Ginny. She heads up, I think it's called the New Green Deal, is it? Some kind of thing. 
And this is David, who's a very famous neo-Nazi. And he's helping us actually move cow shit, which is quite ironic in this picture, because he told me he's got great upper body strength. So we've, um, we've got him to help us there because we really believe it doesn't matter what your political views are, how extreme you are, if we can somehow engage with you on some level, we're more than happy. So there's our dear David shoveling shite. And people ask about children. They say, oh, it's boring for children. I wish it was boring for children sometimes because uh, feeling responsible for loads of kids is kind of nerve wracking for me. But that's just to show you that children are like locusts. If you give them those litter pickers, they honestly, they can pick up with their little tiny beady eyes, a cigarette end from 20 paces, they're brilliant. So children love to get involved. And we've got all sorts of ages and all sorts of abilities. We've got some, and there's a nice image there of a man who just likes to hold a spade and stand, but you know, we can just turn away from that. This is a lovely picture to show you that um, you need to expose people to new things. These little boys were racing round on a bike when we were trying to set up a, a little one day harvest festival. And I asked them, had they ever heard of a florist? They said, we've never heard of a florist. I said, I'm gonna teach you how to be florists and got them to sellotape little poses of herbs. I'm gonna meet them when they're big boys and see if they ever do turn out to be florists. But um, it's, it's strange that you can engage people with plants and leaves and flowers in lots of different ways. This is our health centre. This is our third health centre. This town was made famous by a killer, I've forgotten his name, Harold Chipman. So they keep demolishing um, health centres so we won't remember him. So this is the latest um, health centre. It's one of those PFI buildings, completely planted with architects, evergreen, prickly, boring plants, which we have removed. And we planted the whole boundary with apples, pears, plums, nuts, hundreds of fruit bushes, raspberries, strawberries, blackcurrants, because that's what you're supposed to do to be healthy. You're supposed to have, you're supposed to eat an apple, aren't you? So that's what we've done there. This is outside a pub on the main road. The landlady, she's on our board, is from Thailand and her dad has come over and he was very bored. So this was a council hedge here. So we asked the council to bring a tractor and dig it out. And we made a little Thai garden because he didn't speak any English. And here it is later in the autumn, looking really lovely. This is the clinic. Uh, this is the doctor's surgery. Um, what's interesting about this picture is there's, you know, all new buildings today, when they landscape them for their horrible plants, they never put, it's all concrete and brick and rubble with maybe three inches of soil. These apples are actually doing really well in about four inches. Four inches with just uh, rubble underneath. So it does go to show you a lot of the things they say about gardening is actually bull because plants are like kids. They want to grow and they want to be good and they somehow manage it. This, this is a growers thing, fennel, this kind of fennel, it's not bulb fennel. Everybody said, you should never ever plant this fennel because it's a thug, it'll, it, it'll grow anywhere, you'll never get rid of it. And it's our most popular thing. This is just a busy car park. And when you see fennel and smell it and see the amount of um, bugs and bees and butterflies that it attracts, and 
You can just watch people going past having a little sniff and a chew. It's, it's my top tip. It's like a weed, it's fantastic. Uh, this is a street in the middle of town. It was all boarded up because the council are trying to sell the land. So we've made a little garden and we, we telephoned the council using a very posh voice and asked them to send a street sign and they did. And that was about seven years ago now. So the land is still not sown, sold, our garden's still there. But best of all, uh, people actually believe the whole place. They say, oh, we can't find the postcode. They believe it is Pollination Street. So you can name your own streets. This is just to say that our organization is completely self-sufficient. So we don't, we made a policy decision about five or six years ago, not to apply for any public money, to be our own bosses and not be accountable to anybody, just ourselves. And we did that through vegetable tourism. So you'll see what's wrong with this picture. It's the middle of winter, there's nothing growing but people still wanted to come. We've stopped doing tours in the winter now. So this is a coach load of bods from somewhere. So our form, our booking form says, if you've got money, pay us. If you haven't got money, we'll still give you a tour. So um, we feel comfortable about it. So we've created um, a map that you can download or pick up free at the, a tourist information centre. And the reason we have a tour around the town isn't because we're great growers, that we've got anything fantastic to show. It's because we're a poor town a long way from anywhere. And all of those tours will go through the market. Will end, If they buy a coffee at pound thirty, ka -ching, that's a tiny amount out of money in the pot. If they buy some cheese and a loaf of bread, we're helping the local economy. In tiny, small actions, we believe we can make a difference. So we had a good idea in 2008. Uh, we're pretty low tech. We haven't got anything much. We haven't got a filing cabinet or any, any we don't keep any records or paper. And we're only interested in our own town, but over the years, it has spread all over the place. And we're not really that interested in that aspect of it either. Although it's nice to get emails from projects across the world. So this is um, three years of, we had to calculate for something, how many visitors we'd had in three years that would have officially booked a tour. So that's that's where they've come from. I'm not very good at geography. So I've actually, I've never even looked at it closely, but there you go. So our actions aren't just about vegetables. They're not just about growing in the public spaces. We do all sorts of things. This is a, a big thing that we wove one gardening Sunday and we placed it not on our land because obviously we haven't got any on somebody else's land in a street where on the other side all the shops have those horrible shutters so nobody goes there and we've cracked on to that phenomena which i've never really got but it's called the selfie so now people want to go and take selfies near a big old wicker man so it's good for business and it's fun. We're very interested in the power of the triangle because we've noticed that the humans, where we got this idea from, I don't know when it first started, that if you see bunting, if you see triangles somewhere, you think, wow, stop the car. Oh, let's get off the bus. Something is happening because there's triangles about. So uh, we've capitalized on that. And we can have an event, a big community event, maybe 500 people using really simple things, triangles on string. 
And this queue of people are queuing for bread and jam. So you don't need to be fancy. You don't need to be Gordon Bleu chefs or whatever they are. You can give people bread and jam and conversation start about my granny making bread or dams and jam. And that's what we're interested in. We're interested in connections between people, between food, between nature and kindness. So I can't, I really am a really big fan of being frugal and bringing back simple pleasures. If we want to, we can. Uh, how is everybody awake? Have I talked too long? What's the time? Am I, could someone nod? What time is it? Can I keep going? Right. We can do really uh, big stuff. So for our 10th anniversary, we just thought we're gonna have a festival of ideas. We're gonna do something really big, but we've got no money and we're not gonna ask anyone for any money. We're gonna work out something. So this is a picture of the Peace Hall. It's one of, well, I think it most probably is the finest in the whole of England, ancient uh, Peace Hall, a very exclusive, lovely venue. And we asked the owners, we said, um, we're gonna feed a thousand people for nothing. Uh, can we do it at your place? And of course they thought we were just bullying, but we decided we would do it, but better, than anything, we fed them waste food. We didn't actually mention that in the beginning. So uh, we acquired tons of food that was all destined for the landfill. And we asked for cooks from local restaurants, communities. Look at this lady. She's being a bit horrified. I think she's just heard that that food was going into a dustbin. But anyway, and then we, we were a bit short of cooks, so we asked the, I don't know the technical word, battalion, some, some British army men. So they came along and they said, where's the meat, Mary? Where's the fish? I said, oh, it's illegal, mate, to use waste meat and fish. It's only vegetables. And they were completely thrown. I said, surely when you're at war, you cook vegetables. They said, we still get meat wherever we are in the theater of war. Anyway, they were brilliant cooks. They got their heads around it and all the women were impressed. That if it was good enough for the British army, it was good enough for them. So uh, these are all the people queuing up to get their food. It was re We're very proud of this because uh, we think that's quite an achievement. We didn't even take any minutes or plan it very well or have a meeting. We just rocked up and did it, it was nice. So we keep a really, we like the door open for anybody. We like not to concentrate on all things good. So you will get 82 year olds who can't bend. You will get people who say, I can't even make a brew, but I could knit something. It's ridiculous to knit covers for bollards because um, I'm not a pet owner and I don't like them. But dogs, we all on these but the shopkeepers take it in turns to wash them so it's not it's nothing I like but it's what people like to do bring out a bollard cover so there you go the craziest of ideas can really make people feel that they're contributing to their town and again people take selfies on a a bit of knitting on a bollard that's very strange to me so especially for all of you listening, the message I truly believe, no one's paying me to say anything. People have power. We're lazy buggers. People, we've sleepwalked into this idea, the state knows best. Does it buggery? It doesn't know best. Why, when, when did we wake up with this idea? The state knows best. The people know best and the people have power the public realm belongs to us, the people. So we've just got to get off our asses and get on with it because we have got power. It, you know, we can hide behind health and safety and organisation and rules. The truth is the prisons are full. There is no room for activists and grannies 
getting nicked by bollards, knitted bollard covers or planting trees in health centres. Honestly, trust me, there, there's no room for it. We do have power and we can either choose to use our power or choose not to. So we love actions, not talk. These are our welcome to Todmorden signs. They've been like that for eight years. Now we could have a right moan in the whinge, but actually there's people in care homes that need the budget, not new signs. So we measured them all up, commissioned an artist, and we just screwed them on top look of the old signs. And we, we did that years ago. No one's even mentioned it. Uh, I'm sure they all like having maps there. So we like to do things that are win-win, that helps the council, helps the police, helps us. But we're not going to grovel about it. But we have learned this. Red ribbon. I'm giving you all my secrets now. Get some red ribbon and the mayor. Everyone's got a mayor. They hang about. They've got nothing to do. They love their photograph taken. So this is a listed ancient horse tunnel. And if you're wobbly, you've got a push chair, you've got some disability, it's really steep to get down there because it's got no handrail. And we tried for maybe five years to negotiate with British Waterways, the Canal and Rivers Trust, the listed people, the cons conservation people. Nobody, oh, it's impossible, it's impossible. And then we put up a handrail, a piece of ribbon, and asked the mayor, look at that, 49 pence scissors to cut it. So now it's legal because surely as the mayor's cut it. So that's my top tip, fix something and then get the mayor to kind of give it the seal of approval by cutting a bit of ribbon. So everything that we do is there's nothing fancy. There's nothing clever. There's no documents written about it. We don't have an annual meeting and say, what shall we achieve in the year ahead? We say, let's just keep on doing what we're doing. So truly, there's nothing behind this. It's just ordinary Joes being kind and keeping on. Anyone can do it. Uh, university kids can do it. You know, old people can do it. Don't worry, anyone. I'm proud of this, so I'm going to show you. During COVID, some men came forward who have got really good jobs in, re in the real life, in theatres or prop design or something, and they were really bored. So they built these little libraries that we've put up across town. And it's so fantastic. Honestly, when I walk past and see kids getting a book or, or someone taking a book, I just think feeding minds, not just bellies, growing, growing minds, it's lovely. So that's an idea you could do easily. The world's awash with books. This is our kindness corner. It's in the open, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for clothing, food, whatever people need. And this is a huge warehouse, which is called a share house, where all of the food um, designed for waste is, um, intercepted. This is an old picture. So three years ago, this is how many boxes we all ordered. We all pay on standing order to get a box of food destined to landfill. And our money that we pay pays for the infrastructure of the share house. And today is, um, it's called Freegan Box Day every Monday and today we had 85 delivered so we've re really grown that project of using food that's perfectly fit for human consumption but because of the way our country is it's chucked away that's just to say when you have a ceremony and you're just giving away a piece of wood with the word kindness there's a great queue of people who want to be awarded one this is our local mosque. It's the only mosque, I bet you, in the whole world. It's got a great big kindness sign on the mosque. In fact, I must get a slide for that. Uh, this is our 
tourist information who thought we were a bunch of crackpots and didn't take any notice of us. And one day we gave them our artwork. We said, we paid for this and we don't need to use it anymore. And, and they immediately had a load of stuff printed and make money because we're not that interested in making money. So it's gone from um, those crackpots to now the biggest visitors of the town. So that's really lovely. And this is our cricket club. It's the only one in the whole of Yorkshire that at the bottom of, there's a technical word for this box. I think that lifts up and you get the score. But anyway, it's got kindness and a lovely quote from the Dalai Lama at the bottom of the, you know, normally it says fags or some car company. So we love it that it says kindness. And there is no office. That's what we've got, two monkey um, iPads that we do our communication with all the projects across the world on there. And this is kindness, really at the end. And these are my top tips for activists, which is dream big, eat together, because we proved that, you know, you can get any job done, if, even if it's cakes and a brew. Um, I find that very boring meetings and documents will, if you want to kill a project, produce waffle on and produce a load of paperwork, then you can kill it, get rid of it. So um, otherwise, if you don't want to kill it, just be sure and sweet about it all. I, I think put joy on the top of your agenda. I feel as joyous today as I did those 10 years ago. And uh, the only thing that feels more creaky is my knees, but I still feel as joyous. And be in it for the long game. You can't change culture about sustainability, about growing things, about kindness to nature and people in, by having loads of money in projects. You've got to be in for the long game. Use pictures because they're lovely. And there's a lot of um, not talking and communicating goes on. So we're, we're communicating and talking to people as much as we can all the time. And I am lucky. I've got to say, um, it's called something. Mm, it's uh, Microsoft um, and it's all squares. Anyway, our secretary schedules the meeting in advance. She schedules the cooks, the washer uppers, the table layers. It's all done on that uh, document. I've forgotten what it's called. And it really works because everybody knows where they are and you know how long you're going to commit. And if you can't make it, you can look at the document and swap it with someone else. You could swap your washing up till the next month, whatever. So I think I, I was scared when I first saw it, but it really works for us. There you go. That's it. Done. Thank you. Stop share. <laughs> Mary, thank you so, so much.